It is very exciting that we have finally made it to the first video of 2020. I'm very much looking forward to the start of this new year. What I'm most excited about for this year is my friend Sarah and I, we have once again booked another trip to Disneyland this June. So that's still like half a year away, but an awesome thing to look forward to in 2020. However, in this video, we're not really gonna be talking about or thinking about 2020. We're gonna be doing a wrap up of 2019 and showing some of the limited edition 2019 Disney pin sets I completed. Throughout the year, Disney will have a various number of different monthly limited edition pin sets that they release. Some might be specific to Disneyland or Disney World, and others are shared between both coasts. And there were two different sets that I decided to collect this year. So here I have my completed pin sets for the Disneyland Crests of the Kingdom and the shared release of the Pin Trading Pop-Up Book pins. These two sets are the first time that I've ever actually collected a monthly limited edition pin series. I'm not so much as into collecting pin sets as I am to say like, oh, an individual pin might fall into my collections, but I ended up really liking these sets kind of as a whole. There are pros and cons to collecting the monthly limited edition pin sets. It is fun to see a collection come together. It like satisfies your collector needs. But on the other hand, Disney knows what they're doing and they're trying to suck you in with all these releases and like, oh, if you're going to start to collect this, you're going to have to collect it the rest of the year. So that's why I don't too often collect these monthly pin series in full, but I'm very excited to show a closer look at all of these pins. I got this cheap pin board, I think from the Target dollar stop at some point, and it ends up fitting both of these collections pretty nicely. I wanted to start with showing all of the Disneyland Crests of the Kingdom monthly pin releases. Each of these is a limited edition of 2000 and you could only get them at Disneyland. This whole set was really lovely hinged pins that on the front have this beautiful sculpted metal finish and on the inside is kind of a traditional pin enamel. This January pin features Mr. Toad's Wild Ride and these pins on the front all feature a Latin inscription. So here we have Toadie Acceleratio. I only speak Spanish as a second language so my Latin pronunciations may or may not be accurate. Then you flip this pin open and you see the little scene inside. On all of these, the enamel is really weird and kind of weird quality. So I am not really a fan of the insides of much of any of these pins. I much prefer the outsides. I think this like as is, is just super pretty. Onward to February, we have the Enchanted Tiki Room, and I only experienced this attraction for the first time this last summer in Disneyland, and it really was super enjoyable. We have three birds on the front here, and it says Cantabo Aves Trapicai. Then on our inside scene, we have two of our Tiki Room birds there. And these inside portions are often kind of different shapes too, which makes each of these pins unique. Then we have March, which features Dumbo the Flying Elephant. And our Latin inscription says Volantem Elefanti. Then you open the pin up and inside is a little scene of Dumbo and Timothy the Mouse in his hat. The April pin then features Space Mountain. And our inscription reads Eumus Ad Astra. Then for the inside, we just have some nondescript astronauts riding a Space Mountain vehicle that's kind of just launched itself right into space. Next up, we have the May release, which featured the Haunted Mansion. I feel like stylistically, the Haunted Mansion works perfectly for this awesome sculpted metal design. And our Latin here reads Mortalium Stultum. On the inside of this pin, we have the three hitchhiking ghosts, Gus, Ezra, and Phineas. Now, the June release was when I actually decided to start collecting this series, so I did not start collecting at the beginning of the year. I started in June, got all the rest, and then kind of worked my way through the rest of the months as they did come out. But for June, it features the Pirates of the Caribbean, another attraction that I think fits beautifully with this awesome detailed sculpted metal. The inscription here says, Homines mortuos non fabulam narrare. And inside our pin here, we have our pirate sitting on the pile of treasure. As I mentioned a bit before, with the enamel being kind of weird, it's like it's everything is so smoothed out, which I think, I don't know if that has any, anything to do with the fact that they have it hinged and they needed it really flush, but it's just a really weird quality inside. 
Next up we have July, which is Small World, and this might be one of my favorites of this set. I always love designs that have the classic clock face on them. I think they're just really timeless and pretty. And here on this pin reads, Navigatio Letissimus Circa Mundi. Once we open our pin, we can see a little goat on top of the mountain. And this again is this kind of really nice classic Small World artwork style. Then the pin for August is themed to the Jungle Cruise. So you have your nice prominent ride vehicle on it, and the inscription reads, Excitando Exploratio Ridiculum Iocis. This pronunciation in particular, I have no idea how accurate it is. Then on the inside of this pin, it's kind of based on a scene from the attraction itself, where you have a guy who is climbing up the pole trying to escape from a rhino, and it's like there's almost no detail on his face whatsoever. That's where, however they did the enamel on the inside of these pins, it is just not my favorite. But on this, it is what is outside that really matters. Then for September, we have such another pretty pin. This is themed to the Mad Teacups. I did ride this attraction last summer, but it was with the stipulation that we don't spin the teacups themselves. So I made it through okay, but this is sometimes an attraction better enjoyed on the sidelines. But our Latin on this one reads, Situ Circum Circa. And then inside the pin, we have the whole gang enjoying the teacups. We have the Mad Hatter, the White Rabbit, and then Alice herself. And then October features my favorite attraction, Splash Mountain, with Br'er Rabbit on the front here. You can see he's kind of popping out from the center of the briar patch, kind of where your log comes out at the base of the ride. And our Latin on here says, Risus locem omnis habet. And on the flip side, we have the final zippity doo da scene. So I think that the inside of this is really nice and fun and colorful. Then November features a very classic attraction in King Arthur's Carousel. I think the Latin on this is a little bit simpler, Fantasia Equorum. And I do really like the inside of this pin because you have Minnie and Mickey riding the carousel horses. So I love it when they can incorporate classic characters like this. And then we have the final pin for December, which was just released the other day, and this features Matterhorn Mountain Bobsleds. And our inscription reads, Adsendo Sumum Montis Nivalis. Then on the inside, we do have another character here. We have a very frightened looking Donald riding the Matterhorn with the big scary Yeti coming at him. And the Yeti on the Matterhorn is, is very frightening. Then I wanted to share the pins on the bottom of this board, which are all part of the Pin Trading Pop-Up Monthly Series, which is available at both coasts. So we have January, which started off with Peter Pan, and these, like the other pins, are hinged pins, but there's a little bit extra on the inside. So the front always has some sort of screen-printed elements on them, and then you open the pin up just like a book. On the right side, you have this really nice detailed scene, which always includes a pin-on-pin -on, -pin on there, so Peter is the nice pin-on-pin -pin element. And then on the left side, you have kind of the beginning of a book, basically. So we have, once upon a time, Peter Pan was soaring above the rooftops of London, looking for his shadow when he found the window of the Darlings. So I think these pins are really nice, both inside and outside. The February release was for Alice in Wonderland, and I really love the colors chosen for this. Then we can open up the Alice book, and you can see our scene on the inside features Alice and the White Rabbit. The White Rabbit definitely looks like he's running a little bit late. And then our story inscription reads, Once upon a time, Alice was lazily daydreaming with her cat Dinah. All of a sudden, she saw a White Rabbit run by in a hurry. I'm late, he cried. The March release then featured Winnie the Pooh. So what's nice about this series is that they featured a wide variety of different Disney characters or Disney movies. You have a slew of classics, a few more modern ones, some that aren't as represented. But you can't go wrong with some Winnie the Pooh. On the inside of our pin trading pop-up book, we have a little Pooh bear diving out with his pot of honey. And then our story on the inside reads, Once upon a time, Winnie the Pooh was visiting his friend Rabbit for lunch. He ate and ate and ate, but when he tried to leave, he couldn't. Poor Pooh was stuck. Then April brought the 101 Dalmatians, 
which inside our pin trading pop-up book, we have yet again, more Dalmatians on the inside. And it looks like the silhouette of Cruella in the background there. And then our story begins with, once upon a time, Pongo and Perdita were living happily with their 15 new puppies, Roger and Anita. One day, they were all unexpectedly visited by none other than Cruella de Vil. May then brings us to some of the more modern classics with Princess and the Frog. Inside of our book, we have a scene of Tiana on the balcony. She's wishing on a star, and then we have our pin-on-pin -pin little Naveen frog there. And this story begins, Once upon a time, Tiana was wishing upon an evening star for a restaurant of her very own, when a frog named Naveen hopped up to the balcony next to her. Then for June, we had the Hercules pin trading release, and the inside is a quite dynamic scene. So we have Hercules fighting our big monster here. Its whole head is a pin on pin. And then our story here reads, Once upon a time, Hercules discovered he was the long lost son of Zeus. In order to rejoin his family on Mount Olympus, he first needed to become a true hero. Using his mighty strength, Herc set out to prove himself. The July release featured Hunchback of Notre Dame, and I think it was very nice to feature this movie because you don't see it represented too much in a lot of recent pins. When we open up our book, we can see we have Quasimodo. It looks like he's there at the Festival of Fools, and we also have Esmeralda in the background. Our story then reads, Once upon a time, Quasimodo, longing to be a part of the world beyond his lonely bell tower, descended from the cathedral and joined in the topsy-turvy celebration of the Festival of Fools Below. August then features what might be my favorite pin from this set, which is Beauty and the Beast. So I love that the front of this has Belle in her blue dress and she's reading a book. And then if we open up this pin book, we have a really beautiful scene with Belle and the Beast dancing together in the ballroom. And then the story goes, Once upon a time, Belle took her father's place in an enchanted castle. She was afraid and alone, but as she slowly befriended the objects there, she began to wonder if she could truly learn to love a beast. The September release featured Mulan, and I finally saw the full trailer for the live-action Mulan movie that's coming out, so I'm very interested to see how that one turns out. But on the inside of this book, we have what I think is a really awesome scene. We have Mulan in full warrior mode. She's ready to shoot off the firework. And then you have little Mushu on the top of it there. And then our story here reads, Once upon a time, Mulan secretly joined the army in her father's place. In order to keep her secret and uphold her family's honor, she needed to use all of her wits to help defeat the evil Shan Yu. Now, October was definitely the most interesting release from this series because it featured The Wind and the Willows, which is the story of Mr. Toad. So we have Mr. Toad and Cyril the Horse on the front, and on the inside here, we have a Mr. Toad hanging off of a little wooden post, and a car is just kind of driving itself away. Our story here reads, Once upon a time, Mr. Toad and his good friend Cyril were on their way to nowhere in particular when a motor car zoomed by them on the country road. Toad had never seen anything like it. The penultimate pin in the series for November featured Tangled. You have Rapunzel here swinging by her hair. Her eyes are a little bit weird, but overall still kind of nice. And then opening up our book, we of course have the classic floating lantern scene when they're sending off their little pin on pin lantern. And our story here reads, Once upon a time, Rapunzel met Flynn Rider, who promised to take her out of her lonely tower to see the floating lights that journeyed into the sky each year on her birthday. And then finally, we had a very fitting pin for the final December release, which was Mickey's Christmas Carol on the front featuring Mickey Mouse as poor Bob Cratchit. And then on the inside of our last little book, we have Scrooge McDuck knocking on kind of the goofy looking Jacob Marley-esque door knocker. And then our last story goes, Scrooge returned home on a snowy Christmas Eve night. As he opened the door, his door knocker changed shape. Surely that couldn't be his partner, Jacob Marley. So because it is a new year, Disney, of course, has a brand new slew of monthly limited edition pin sets they're releasing. I've yet to decide if there's any that I want to collect in full. 
My advice is if you're debating about whether you want to collect a set or not, just get the January releases regardless because the first pins that are released in a series always become the most valued due to the fact that as time goes on, more people decide that they want to collect this series and are like, oh, I need the first one of this set. But that pin usually at that point is sold out at the parks and they have to turn to the secondary market and that increases the value. So if you're debating about whether or not to collect one of the upcoming monthly pin sets, it's always safe to say, hey, yeah, I'll just get the January releases. If you don't like them, you can end up trading them, but they will probably have the most value out of any of the pins released in the set. So do let me know if you are looking forward to any of the 2020 monthly pin sets that are being released. You can always follow Disney Pins blog on their Instagram or website if you do need information on any of the weekly or monthly Disney pin releases. But I hope you have a happy start to the new year and thanks for watching!